And now, The Bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Buffet. Alright, man. We were gonna give you, I was going to give you the whole song. Why not? Just give you the Never whole do. fucking song. Aha! It's the Bonfire Comedy Central Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J. Okerson. This is the Lost Tapes on a Thursday. Thursday. I've been in sunny Los Angeles all week. Just tanning up <laughs> and fucking. Dude, your tan lines are popping. I've just been oiling and lotioning <laughs> and oiling and, and lotioning and lotioning. And I can't oiling. even take. Wouldn't it be nice? Oh, I thought that's what it was. <laughs> Oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, sometimes yeah. I think I know something and then I'm wrong, and sometimes I do know. I like that your insecurity comes in there. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice? I don't know. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I always Chris Farley. It. I'm just ugly. I'm fucking idiot. I have so a big ugly. head and I'm dumb. I'm, I'm an idiot. ugly person. I'm fucking idiot. I'm a Everything fucking is idiot. Ugly. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Netflix. Netflix got shut down. Convenient when we're going after the flat earthers. Uh oh, is this a conspiracy? If you ask Brandon, if you ask Nathan, he would be like, "They're just diabolically getting in your head." Yeah, borium, orium, forium. <laughs> yeah, we wanted Alaska, to, Antarctica, Alabama. We wanted to get back into uh, behind the curve, but our Netflix is down. Um, it's like down at all, like I mean, Black Lou. It's got like, plenty of things to say about. It. Of course, but Black Lou, it's like down. I believe it's down. I th- I'd like to give credit for Nate Bargatze's. Nate Bargatze's shutting down Netflix. Is, is so popular. That it fucking overloaded. Fucking shut down the flicks. I'll say this, man. We have um, soap operas going on in the studio. My stories? And I've never noticed how similar to porn they look. Oh, it's like yeah. that quality. There was there was a scene with a doctor and a guy and his girlfriend, and I was like, this looks like it's heading towards like a threesome. <laughs> like, if I was watching that, I'd be like, this chick's about to blow both these dudes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it was like, it was that kind of thing where it's like clearly staged and they're all so beautifully and well put together. Yeah. No one's got facial hair. No one. And if they do, it's perfect. Look at that. That's a, that's so orchestrated. You got to be Dan Soder level handsome to pull off no facial hair. Let me tell you right now, as a guy that comes in with a bare chin, get yeah. ready. Get ready for You've never lot. been a beard guy ever. Huh? I can't grow it. Yes, you can. I would I can love see the stubble. I, I can see the stubble. Your stubble is full. When's the last time you actually gave it a whirl, dude? Like, uh, can I tell you what really fucked me up? Yeah. Can I tell you my moment of where I'd never try to grow a beard when I was 19 and I worked in Alaska? I was like, oh, let me go full fucking Alaskan and I'll get a beard <laughs> and I'll come back to Denver. Burly, hairy. There's no way that Jeannie won't want me. That girl. That <laughs> There's no way she won't want me. Like, I like guys with beard. By the way, I probably made it five weeks without shaving uh-huh. and I was uh, moving a crane. We were like fixing uh, the hydraulic on a crane and this fisherman walks by and he knew my friend Steve, but he didn't know me and he goes, what's up Steve? And he goes, hey Greenhorn, don't grow a beard unless you can. And I was like, wow. Oh. And then at lunch I went and shaved it off. At don't lunch I shaved guy. and I was like, it's all wispy. By the way, came back home, turned out Jeannie made out with my friend Joey and just was fucking around with him all summer while I was up in Alaska working. Remember Joey's beard? Though God damn, he did have a good beard. He that had was great, a great stubble. Beard. He had stubble in high school. Did you have stubble in high school? No, you had a baby face. I had wispy dick hairs on my fucking cheeks and below my nose. When did you? When did it come in like a man's beard? A couple years ago. Really? Uh, I mid thirties. I, I always had a hard time growing this part. Now probably actually late twenties or something. But I my beard hair was always pretty i still don't like the texture of my beard hair i think it looks great it looks it's, full uh, it's not bad it's not bad you got a full beard jacob did you have facial hair were you baby faced i never grew it out until my 20s but i had it was always filled in yeah yeah, yeah. christine when did your five o'clock shadow come in <laughs> christine when did you start growing a beard i think 12 is the answer <laughs> What is that? It's always weird to me when I when you see guys with like like uh, Black Lou has an unbelievable beard. Did you have good facial hair your whole life, Black Lou? Of course, he's a black guy. Yes, but I didn't do it the right way. You did mustaches, like I had, thin uh, mustache, that stupid chin strap yeah, for yeah, yeah. far too long. But like everybody the, did that everybody. really small one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people did the chin strap. It was big and Philly. I didn't ever do 
super thin line, but I did about uh, three quarters of an inch. I remember that's when I met you. You had that. I'd, I'd have it just run along the chin line. Philly, well, for, look, look, a beard is the fat man's what's a, fucking saving grace. Yeah, I mean, what's always. a uh, what's a Philly beard that's just chin down? No, the Philly beard problem is that's got some sort of weird formula in it, and they also outline the beard in some sort of makeup. Really? Yeah, and it's Jacob, very can glistening. You search, can you it's search very Philly, glistening. Search for Philly beard. Yeah, Philly beards. Because I want to see what it... Yeah, because it's like a specific... But it's, I thought it was no mustache, right? Sometimes it doesn't matter if there's a mustache. No, that's not the, the issue as much. Yeah, it's just very like sharp, long, and then it's usually got some sort of a makeup thing. Or, yeah, see how it's like... It's too perfect. There's like a makeup. There's like a liner on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so he put a liner. All right, but that seems natural. That's, that's not like really. A, that's, that's not. Like but that's more Philly beard. That's a Philly beard. That's a Philly beard. So it's like very, very manicured. That's what I was just gonna say. And very long. That's a Philly beard for sure. So a Philly beard, just like super manicured and well put. Yeah, look at that. Look it's how manicured up. it is. Look at that lineup. But if you go back even to like the late nineties or something, yeah, uh, early two thousands in Philly, they were really doing a lot of makeup in the beard. Really, so just popping it out. Just making sure it just really pops with... You do Philly beard like designs, if you could look that up. We'll put these all out of you at yeah, the Bonfire, at the bonfire. SXM. Follow us uh, on Twitter, Instagram, at the Bonfire SXM. Also, go download our podcast and rate and review so we can have some ammo and negotiations Yeah, with these cocksuckers. Yeah, please, please download the thing. It's a whole ordeal. Just what? download our podcast. Download our podcast, even though you're listening. Please, we need our numbers in here. We we're in a real vulnerable situation, guys. They're going to make us go to AM. <laughs> I'd argue that I have a bit of a Philly beard for a white guy. You do. A if you bit. line it up more, you have it lined down here, right here. It's lined up. It's perfect. Yes. I'm saying if you take a look right here, mm-hmm. you go right in here and take care of it. I want you to grow face. a beard. I can't grow a beard. You can though. I would love to. You you let that fucking you let that Alaskan fisherman fucking fisherman bull you out. That's probably dead of meth. Yeah, yeah. What are you listening to him for? He was just trying to make you feel better. You were the new hot shot in town. I was hot. You Nineteen. Were fucking, you were canning the way he only used to be able to. I was fucking shoveling rocks with a shovel shirtless. You were so hot, man. Speaking of so hot, everyone in this soap opera is so hot. It, that's why it looks like a porn. Yeah, Christine, what are you flicking bean before we got in here? Yeah, she was actually. Uh, look at that. Look at how hot that lady is. Turn it off. She's just a hot lady. I don't want to watch a soap opera. I do. They're all hot. <laughs> <laughs> they took a. Uh, uh, they always. They took a message from the Spanish ones. Remember? Yeah. yeah the Spanish well, ones always said the girls with the big titties. Oh and, man! But then like Telemundo and Univision just had them in the news. That's when they started. I believe it's Univision. Uni- is it? No, I don't know. Univision. Univision? Univision. 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 Not Univision? Univision. That's the white way of saying it? Isabella's coming in too, and her mom, I mean, not her mom, her grandmother. Oh, the Colombia. Really watches a lot of Univision. And they, what they try to compare, this happens with Canada TV too, and and, uh, England, London TV, is because they only have a few things. They have to try to correlate it to what it's like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's never, it's never that thing. Yeah, it's never. I remember what, what, uh, what Isabella's grandmother said was the Spanish. She goes, oh, this is the Colombian Bill Maher, basically. Oh, I want to see this guy. Bill Maher, she guy? said, but he's not. You'll never find him like that. I'm sure she. that was her description of it. Yeah. She goes, it's the Colombian Bill Maher. And it's like a guy who's like juggling. He's like, do 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 And it translates to that's the rights economic policy. Yeah. Go, oh, all right. Well, you know, he's kind of Bill Maher. Oh, I dropped the ball. Yeah, I dropped the ball. He goes, anyway, we're going to be talking to state senator. Yeah. Today, come on. Harris is on the panel with writer Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Jordan Peterson and Miss Comora Harris will break down prison reform. <laughs> prison reform and also mandatory minimums. Is there any... Isabella just walked in, too. Is, your grandmother watches a lot of, like, Univision yeah. and stuff like that. Is it's there pronounced a, Univision if you're white. <laughs> it's Univision, right? Univision. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Suck on that, Jacob! Oh. Your father is such a wero. <laughs> Check out the gringo diary. Your papa's extra wero. <laughs> Your papa's extra too blanco. Uh, he's uh, muy blanco. Blanco. Yeah, he's muy blanco. Gringo. <laughs> fucking gringo. He's, hey. 
<risa> eh, papá. Eh, mi papá es eh, blanca, <risa> ¿eh? Es eh, estúpido blanco. Y una visión. Y una visión. Una visión. Uh, oh, man, I would be... I have the voice for such a great Univision. Hola, hola, hola. Es no de Univision. Are any of the shows entertaining whatsoever? No. Is do you, under, do you understand it when you watch it? Yeah. You So you get it, and you're like, these things suck. Yeah, it's just, like, weird. It'll, like, especially, like, the late night ones that she watches, it'll be, like... It'll be like a man with a puppet, and like the puppet will fall off, and like he'll fall off the stage. Yeah, really? and then she goes, she yeah. goes, this, uh, this is Tom Brokaw of Colombia. <laughs> this, <is> the, <laughs> this man right here is Walter Cronkite, <laughs> the man in the bee suit. Like you the man Isabel's in the bee suit. grandmother is sad only. Yeah. He's yeah. my favorite show I, on the television. I like to kiss the president, <laughs> el presidente. Look at these shows. Oi, <laughs> oi, mira quién. On another episode Vaya. of Noticiero Univision. Well, I don't like the name of this. Despierta Amer Desperate America? So let's see means. it. Let's see it. Go to Desperate America. What the Christ are they saying? No, They're let's like, wake up America. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we thought Despierta was desperate. So funny to Despierta be... Despierta Housewives? It's so funny to see like two insecure Americans read shit wrong in Spanish. We're like, what does that mean? Amer desperate Americans. You want to fucking come over here and say that shit to my face? Do you remember, Isabella, learning Spanish or you just knew it? I just knew it. It just because it was talked to you enough. That's because crazy. Is, is is your mom fluent in Spanish? Yeah, oh, she yeah. is. I didn't know Carla. It was fluent in Spanish. Oh my god! It's yeah, one of the yeah, coolest yeah. things in the world is when someone walks up and just fucking nails it. No, when you don't understand Spanish and all you hear is uh, your ex wife and her friends say the word gordo a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you look at what that means? It doesn't. It's not nice. Right, I'll tell you this: it's not a Taco Bell thing like I thought it was. It's not a yeah gordita. A gordita <laughs> even means little fatso. <laughs> 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 I love that they got over with the fucking. Talker called Little Fat So. Uh, little we're, fat so. we're just little like, fatty. You're like, yes. <laughs> I'd like uh, a gordita, please. Anyone who's Spanish yeah. working there is laughing. He goes, I bet you do. Yeah. Oh, look at you, A fun. gordo for El Gordo. Oh, yeah. You know. Dude, there was this food runner at Dose that they just called him Gord Gordo. His name was Jose. And they're like, shut up, Gordo. And he's just uh. this little, little handball of a man. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, could lift a full tray of fucking dishes like it was nothing. You want to fucking see some strength? Look at food runners. They just lift up those trays with one hand. And you're like, good lord. Doesn't seem so gordo to me. It seems pretty it sounds muy. Like he's a very strong person. It sounds like muy badassery. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I, like, what? I've never. You're a food runner. Oh, that's where the flex came. Maybe that's why your neck's all fucked. Four plates in one hand. Four plates in one hand. Bro, I'm talking a long gated I'm talking oval tray, stack three entrees high. You want me to bring in my boys? You want me to bring in the wrecking crew? You want to go back and forth with this? You want to do this? I'll bring in Roberto. You I'll bring in Gordo. J Jacob, how much does this mean to you, dog? Yeah, you want me to you fucking, fucking make this whole thing? You want me to get these midtown killers? It's been a while. Oh, that's no, a real backpedal. Oh, yeah, you lost your fucking fastball. No, I bet I could still do four plays. Why are you fronting in front of Roxanne Shante? Yeah, dude, you're trying to act bad just because I got a DJ in that room. It's We're fucking old school. Yeah, we have children who are learning in this room. That's what we have. <laughs> you know what that means? That means we're growing. She, she knows she's the only one in here to knows another language. Yeah, it really is. It's just like a room full of dumb people, and then like, and then Isabella's like, "Yeah, I can speak Spanish." We're like, I "My friend Jay um, in college spoke fluent Spanish, and I didn't know that." And there's a place in Tucson called Los Betos, which is like late night drunk burritos. And there's a there's one on campus that's just swarmed when the ball, bars let out because everyone wants a fucking two a.m. burrito. He would just cut the line and just go and talk to the guys in Spanish. And they're like, what's up? Because he was just a white guy that spoke yeah. Spanish. And they're like, yeah, what do you want, dude? <laughs> like, it was, oh, you, you go in with Jay and he'd just be like, uh, let me get a steak burrito and a breakfast burrito for my friend. And like, yeah, just fucking give us 10 bucks. And you just, dude, that is exactly the story of how Isabella got into MS-13. Whoa. I said they thought she was white. And then she had a stomach tattoo, which yeah. I knew was going to come in handy when I got it for her. And I, I knew that was going to come in handy. she was five years old, she hated that needle. <laughs> she did not like the needle. Uh, and she said, what's thug life, daddy? And I go, you'll see. So what is, what is, uh. Uh, yeah, El Salvador for life. What does that mean, Dad? You'll see. Daddy, I don't want to wear a Dan Marino jersey. <laughs> You'll up. see. You'll see, MS-13. I'll take you in if you do. Hang on, good. I'm going to shit talk you guys. Actually, I'm just going to say some nice things to Isabel in Spanish about you guys. So okay. Don't even think about it. Uh, Daniel. <laughs> it's the cabeza is muy grande, yes? yes. I go like this. Yes. Hold on a goddamn second. I know cabeza. What if that's just what they called me at Dose? They're like, oh, hey, well, here comes Cabeza. I'm like, all right, guys, hold on. The head. 
Hey, uh, look, uh, es uh, negro, negro, es uh, always uh, muy frío, yes? Look, you were uh, muy frío, yes, yes, yes. Hey, uh, uh, DJ Lou like to uh, take the uh, cervezas, yes, uh, cervezas. You're just doing, you're just, you're just doing a guy who's trying to talk on vacation to the staff. I'm shit talking you guys with my daughter, if you don't mind. Do you ever, Isabella? Do you ever bust it out? Do you ever bust out the Spanish and people are fucking blown away? Yeah. Yeah, they're like, what the fuck? This white girl can. Because they think you're just a white white yeah. girl, and then you just start busting. That's the coolest. Do you thing hide you're... it? Do you hide it from your rich white friends in school, like school ties, the way I told you to? Yeah. <laughs> you know, she goes in it, and there's like a there's this. She goes in the bathroom and just says, "Build a wall." <laughs> She's like, "God damn it!" She's like, "Wrong Hispanic." Yeah. By right. the way, I'm Colombian. Build that wall. You better build it around the about the around the airport. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm touching down from Colombia. <laughs> yeah. What do you got? Walking across the border from Colombia? You've been to Colombia, right? Yeah. Several times. Yeah. How are the women? <laughs> just start, yeah. <laughs> start going through what if she just goes fast and loose? I go, all right. She goes, yeah, you're, they're your speed hot shot. I go, all right. Isabella gets it. She's been on the show enough. She's third mic. <laughs> <laughs> they're your speed hot shot. <laughs> she goes, there's tease for it. There's tease for effing. What's going on, hot shot? <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you like Colombia when you go there? Yeah. Because going to a, a foreign country for us stupidos it just means we can't speak the language. Most stupidos. <laughs> oh. All of us. <laughs> but when we go there, like, I couldn't go to Colombia and just, like, relax. Because I'd be like, what did he say? I don't know. I don't know shit. Well, whenever, like, we go out in, like, the town, Nona always tells me not to speak English. Because, like, if, you, if you're speaking English... You're going to get kidnapped. No, not even that. Like, <laughs> That's what I always say. Not they'll kidnap you, but just, like, they'll, like, upcharge you for everything. Like, one time I wanted a toy from this store, and I asked Nona if I could get it in English. And the guy said it was, like, $40 for, like, a little tiny doll. And then Nona was like... In Spanish, she was like, this is $40. He was like, oh, no, it's 10 bucks." <laughs> really? Wow. Good for them, though. I mean, good for them, because it, it's not like it doesn't happen here in the United States when someone doesn't speak English, and they're like, yeah, buddy, you cost, uh, you cost $400. And they're like, but you told me it was 100 <laughs> He's like, I know blackface is unethical, but it really that's a really good sell for brownface, if ever I've heard it. You what? Better, if you're going to Colombia, you better put on some brownface. Learn Spanish. <laughs> yeah, just learn Spanish. <laughs> you know how much easier it is to brownface yourself than yeah, to go learn Spanish? Do you know how you want me to much- Rosetta Stone forever? You want me to take one good quick lacquer with some polyurethane? You know that it would throw them off if you just walked up with just brown shoe polish on your face and you went, I want the cheap stuff. I want Thompson's water seal. That way also when it rains there, it'll beat up on my face. Oh my God, he's so sweaty. <laughs> is, that guy, is, is that guy wearing rain on his face? So Desperata America is a, in a morning show? Desperata. I like you keep correcting Dan. It makes me so happy every time. Yeah, I am a fucking giant dumb gringo. If it makes you feel any better, he really can't read English that well. Either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm illiterate. Isabella, I have amassed all this while being really stupid. We did find out on Legion of Skanks last night, it is official. Bobby Hutch can't read. What? I think he's got R. Kelly like reading skills. Bobby Hutch? Yeah, Bobby Hutch. He's just gotten by on pure tenacity? Dude, I mean, it was not hard things we had him read, and he did a hard time with it. You guys did the Floyd Mayweather challenge? Read a page of Harry Potter, and I'll give $100,000 <laughs> to a fucking... That's the coldest shit 50 Cent ever did. He told Floyd Mayweather <clears throat> to read... Oh, 50 I Cent. Heard this. Remember the ice the ice bucket challenge? Yeah. 50 Cent went on and was like, hey, Floyd Mayweather, I know you're illiterate. If you read one page of a Harry Potter book on Jimmy Kimmel, I'll give $100,000 to the charity of your choice. His pockets? Guess, guess what fight... Mayweather didn't take. He didn't. Ju- he the didn't one take on it. the page. Really? Yeah. He wouldn't do it. Look at that up. Look up Fifty Cent and Floyd Mayweather because that became a thing where you were like, as someone that likes watching celebrities beef, I was almost like, Jesus, that's cruel. Dude. This guy's like a fucking fighter. This guy, you know, made hun- hundreds of millions of dollars with his fists. He like read a page. He's like, yeah, I don't do that. Dude, maybe it's my. Uh Maybe it's really evil to feel this way, but there is nothing funnier than seeing illiterate <laughs> we talked about this adults. Is, by the way, this is one of the first bonfire episodes. Was it really? One of the very first bonfire episodes. Funny what Jay- you know, illiterate adults try to read when they're like, you're like, Mon, mon, dude, Jay, day, Monday. I would even Monday. say, I would even say this was one of the topics we did on the test shows. Awesome. Because you were so fired up and you were like, yeah, it's hilarious. Adults not reading. What dipshits? I mean, almost the way Isabel doesn't remember picking up Spanish. I don't remember picking up reading. You should have just got it after a while. Let's yeah. see this 50 cent video. This is a couple years old. Woke up. I looked at the computer. The computer said, Floyd said, 
Fuck T.I., fuck Nelly, fuck 50. I'm like, what do you say fuck me for? <laughs> then fucked your first baby mama, Melissa, then took your fucking fiance. Say fuck that nigga. <laughs> this is a special A-S-L-E-L-S challenge for you, Floyd. If you could read one full page of a Harry Potter book, nigga, I'll give <laughs> 750000 to whatever charitable organization you want to. Fuck the bucket of ice, man. <sighs> I had a phone call from my man Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy said if Floyd accepts the challenge, that he'll put it on the actual show. So Woo! you can read it on the show. We don't want to put pressure on you. We know you can't pronounce those words in that Harry Potter book, so we're going to let you read Cat in the Hat. Cat in the... I mean, dude, you have to be to the point where you're like... Wait, cause what is, they there th- th- is there an example of him not reading yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, really getting, there's, there is? Floyd, there's Floyd Mayweather. I know which one to look up for. It's him doing radio ne- reads, and he can't read the reads. Oh, my God. If you God. think I'm bad and I can't say burglar? No, I don't think you're bad. Yeah, you do. You just said it to your daughter in Spanish. I didn't say that at all in Spanish. You said I had a big head, and you said I can't read. It was only big head. No, I heard it all, dude. Is that, uh, also, uh, uh, muy stupido. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to come with more uh, el illiterato. <laughs> yeah. Illiteratisio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. More, more syllables mind. in the back. Hey, hey. This big headed white man never learned how to read a book. <laughs> Instead, he learned to change his voice. That way, he would not be stupid in a different voice. <laughs> People don't realize that his stupidity chases him wherever he goes. Everywhere. Is this it? Is this, uh, did you find the Floyd Mayweather uh, radio drops? This is just a full video of him not being able to read. Oh, all right. Well, I mean. I can't. I can't. You can't hear? I can't hear before I play. Oh, you lost your superpower. Yeah. You're Clark Kent and Superman too. Why? Why? Why can't you? Why? I mean, I know it's not your fault, but what's the reason Why? so I can kick a wall at this fucking company again why usually on this system and the other studio there's a setup where i can go from q to pc Ooh. or program to pc so i no, can choose what your... i hear well, why would they have that in more than one studio or you know one <laughs> that other people are using at times there's i here. love technical talk <laughs> say q say pts get it all in there i like it how many lpms are we getting <laughs> yeah there, there it is oof this is from The Breakfast Club. This is Charlemagne the God and uh, DJ Envy and Angela from The Breakfast Club on Power 105. All right, fan. I love them. They're a great morning show. Most one of the most dangerous men in the world. First this is a guy that beats the shit out of people. Also, now if every guest we have in, we don't have to have them read something at the end. <laughs> you just want so to check for a literacy? somebody because I want somebody to finally just get mad. Goes, I don't say I don't want to read it. Yeah. They always get mad. The thing is not that doesn't make any sense. Oh, hey, would you mind just reading this little drop for us? He goes, ah, sorry, guys, I really got to go. He goes, it's honestly, it's four words. Can we? Can we? Word. Can we have he goes, it? What's the four words? He goes, they're right here. These words can here. We have, can we have? Can we have it in the read though, where they go like this? You go, hey, what's going on? This is so and so, and you're listening to the bonfire on Comedy Central Radio, and this is the illiteracy challenge. And then they go, oh. <laughs> Oh, you motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, like say, and this is a test to see if I can read well or not by just reading something for the first time. And it's like the, the slow build that goes, oh, no, man. Like, I'm good. I actually got to get out of here, man. He oh, goes, no, no, no I spoke to read. the people. They said you have like five more minutes. He goes, well, I just need for like 30 seconds. He goes, yeah, I'm not really a commercials guy. He goes, no, it's fine. They said it's fine. You just got to say, quick read. Just for the show, it's quick read at all. He goes, I don't want, I said I want to read it, man. That's when wow. the supportive teacher is supposed to go, is there something going on? Yeah, what's wrong? What are you not telling me? <laughs> is this I'm, I'm Hispanic and I'm having sex with my white teacher. <laughs> I'm fourteen. I'm fourteen and I'm blowing the back out of a twenty six year old. Isabella, has a kid banged a student at your school yet? <gasps> Good question. In Freeport, yeah. In Freeport they did? Really? <laughs> when, when you were in the no, school? No, there? like I just heard about it in the high school. It happened recently. Wow. Christine just gave concerned dad's girlfriend look to dad. No, you said did a kid bang a student, but you know you, you know he meant yeah, a teacher, teacher. banging a student. Okay. Oh, yeah, teacher. Yeah. I was like, wait, did somebody just have sex at high school, or was it a teacher situation? People got in trouble for having sex at high school, too. It's a different world, Christine. Well, girl, well, yeah, it's like, a, it's well, it's Catholic school, so if a girl gets pregnant, they, like, send her away, right? She becomes yeah. a nun, and that baby is <laughs> Yeah, Jesus. they're like, you gotta go, and we, we don't want anybody to see this. That's so funny. Oh, dude, oh, get that bitch out of here. That's not oh, true. Did they kick somebody out there pregnant? Uh, no, they got, they kicked someone out. For having an abortion. Yeah, for getting an abortion. Word? That's the not that's Catholic school thing. That's fucking nuts. Show. Huh? I thought they wouldn't let them like show at school. Well, like, that's what the they were can't handle. What? <laughs> <laughs> Babies like being swaddled. No? No? Anybody? No? Oh my god, that is so funny. They're like, you got an you got an abortion, you're out. You're out. I thought I made the responsible move. No. No. You're on the dean's <laughs> list. You do well at geography. 
Not a keeping a baby. <laughs> You're terrible at keeping a baby. Uh, let's get back to these Floyd. Wait, I just want a real question. Oh. Was in Freeport, boy teacher? Yeah. Uh, wow. What a monster. I told you my high school was a 14-year-old freshman with like a freshman girl with like a 26-year-old science teacher, <sighs> a math teacher. He taught her uh, biology. Hello. I took, <laughs> I took Isabella to a, 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 where I went to one of a game that you were cheerleading when you cheerleaded briefly. Mm-hmm. And they were the junior cheerleaders, and they had the actual like, high school cheerleaders there too. And uh, the high, or no, it was it was the opposite school. Both teams had their cheerleaders there. They were playing a black school, and they the were black Freeport. You came to the it, when I was? was in Baldwin. You came to the Freeport game. <laughs> Is that what it was? It was their girl thing. I'm like, it looked like lesbian porno was being made or something. It was way over the top. So I guess all I'm saying is. I get what the teacher did. Yeah. No, I don't. So I think that's yeah. you think the teacher? You think the teacher was at an assembly and he was like, "Who is?" I'll that? tell you what. At a point of that of that cheerleading routine, you're like, "Are these bitches doing this for me?" Yeah. Like, are, they, you go, are they trying to get my attention? You go, Carlo, give me my jacket. I'm put it over my lap. <laughs> well, nobody. It's so funny because everybody just shies away from like teenage girls being sexual at all. Like nobody knows how fun it is as a teenage no, girl. No, this to, like, wasn't realize. shying away at all. Would you say that? <laughs> do you remember that at all? The, the, really. the routines that the girls were doing. It was very. It was over the top. But like they are kind of doing it for you. Like it's not appropriate. But girls are just getting used to the fact that like they have this power over men that they didn't have as a child. They have this thing that can be used. All right, you fucking and wenches. Like, Did they read my know, book? They teenage read my book girls wishful, are very conniving with yeah. it. Like that's. That's why you're supposed to be the adult in the situation and be like, no, because it's meow, like they want to attract too. I, 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 oh, I like she's big, in heat. She's in heat. <laughs> I like Big J Okerson, uh, cheerleader coach. He goes, now you guys are going to say, and y'all play as his pussy, and you guys are going to point to your own pussies. Goes, <laughs> and they go, excuse me? I'm going to go, no, no, they're not out. They're not out. They're not they're, out. They're still in the you're shorts. Wearing the, you're wearing the shorts. But those shorts are going to be really crammed up in there. And I'm going to need you to leg out, leg out. Hands. I mean, up the legs. Really show the bump. Shake your butt. <laughs> Let's get to Floyd Mayweather reading before we fucking drift too far away from that. Yes. I Into agree. Jay's perverted cheerleading camp. Hi, Christine looked that up. Yeah. I told you a story. I was telling you a story, regaling you. 10 second drops I just did. Okay. I'm Floyd Mayweather. And I, I, I'm Floyd Mayweather. And I've joined Heart Radio. For the show, Dude, I'm not lying. I feel bad for him. He sounds like he had a brain injury. I don't feel bad. For like him. the way he's talking, he's a he's bazillionaire. Like, yeah, yeah, but you know when they like, you know when someone like gets through a bad accident and they're like, and more day in and oh day God. out, hey. I learn more about myself. <laughs> like you're sitting there, and you're I'm like, still your same friend <laughs> oh, yeah, since dude, before. <laughs> the accident he goes, he goes rock climbing Phil you're yeah, still rock climbing yeah. Phil uh, uh, pa- not quite Parag- rock climbing nothing gets me higher than- <laughs> oh, I goes, oh, it's this dark <laughs> <laughs> I used to love to paraglide oh, now shit. I love to teach people but it's still just me Peter <laughs> oh Jesus you don't have to be weird. I could do everything I used to do goes, with a ramp. I goes, I still catch air from teaching people. He goes, oh, he goes dude, everyone's bummed out in this room. Everyone's severely bummed <laughs> out. Dude, you were my only friend who was able to dunk. Hey. Yeah. I can still shoot the dude, three ball that's what with every, my one good arm. No, but that's what... <sighs> Every every high school had uh, like the kid that was in the accident that went to that high school and then is now like a quadriplegic and they have to speak to the kids. I didn't have him. You guys didn't have that. We had this guy in my high school. He slid into second base. He was on the baseball team and he slid into second base like he was drunk and they went to the baseball diamond and it was raining and they were sliding <laughs> That's around. That's a terrible reason. To and he's be by the way, yeah, and he slid in and he's a quadriplegic. By the way, now as a thirty five year old, I'm like, so he's a drunk shithead and that's. But his whole like story was he was like. He'd come in and he'd be like, don't do what I did. Don't be stupid. And all these like teenagers are all shook up. Like, what the Always fuck? slide feet first. Yeah. Keep your cleats up. <laughs> Teach the other team a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the Floyd Mayweather doing his brain injury reads. Okay. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio for the show. Your Stripes Movement to support... Hiring vets. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio 
for the show. Your stripes movement to support. Hi. Okay. <laughs> That's your moment. That's your moment, Jay. That's what you were always searching for. Everybody goes, ha. Fuck. And this is holiday. Listen, I'm barely I I'm barely it. literate. You've heard my reads. I'm fucking god awful at it. You're good at it. Well, compared to Floyd Mayweather, I sound like I'm a fucking carnival barker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like a fucking golden yeah, like tongue. I a book club. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. You would think I'm an order. I just fucking read books. Through. I'm Floyd Mayweather. And I'm I'm Floyd. <laughs> I'm Floyd stop, sorry, it's the stop. Hey, Junior, it's the stop that always gets me. We go. I'm damn no. Oh. Guys, let's write a fucking ten page book, the mm-hmm. bonfire book, mm-hmm. and then see how much it would cost. Go through his people to have him read the book on tape for us. Do you really think Floyd he would even weather. try that? Because Fitty just offered what was it a hundred thousand seven hundred seven hundred and fifty thousand. I think we do better with the crowdsourcing. Mm-hmm. If we get this out to the people, how much money will everybody donate to get Floyd Mayweather to read our book on tape, dude? I, I Dan think- Don Don. Well, Dan, how, it's a long A. Huh? Does, he, does he get frustrated? Keep playing. I've joined Heart Radio for the show. Your stripes movement to support hiring vets. For the show. the show. Your stripes, your stripes movement. Yeah, it's, it's the, the show your stripes movement. It's the, Yeah. Charlemagne did it. Just flew that, it. Keep going. At org. By the way, that was Go 20 minutes show. of this ago. <laughs> Go to show your stri- Go to org. Go to showyourstripes.org. Okay. A website. He's punching a the mic. A website that connects veterans <laughs> with employees. Just him, help. Just him punching the mic. Shut up. <laughs> I'll fight you. I'll fight all of you. Floyd, gonna need you to stop punching the book and go ahead and just read it. Yeah, he goes, no, 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 no. This is what I do. <laughs> it's how I learn. This is how I learn. I fight it. I, I get the information through I my scare fists. scare the book into telling me words. I get the information through my fists. Oops. Bin- businesses. Okay. The website that connects veterans with employers and helps businesses find candidates with the best training. I'm Floyd. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio for the show. Your stripes movement. (laughs) He keeps doing the show. Okay, okay, that's enough. Oh yeah, Angela. It was like, no, no, stop. He's gonna beat up all of us. He'll probably beat up. He'll beat up this whole show too. That's bad, man. That's yeah, he's illiterate for sure. Try but finding, I'll tell you what. Try finding other celebrities that are illiterate. I'll tell you what. For him though, I feel like for him, he probably when they if they played that for him, he'd be like, I did pretty good. He goes, I had he it. probably came from not being able to read at all, and he's like, I got show stripes, uh, stripes, you know how hard stripes is. Stripes is not an easy one. I want to say stripes. <laughs> stripe, stripes, 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 stripes. No, it's stripes, huh? Say what? <laughs> what is? He just puts his fist up. What's what is? up? What is? <laughs> it's street base. It's street base, champ. Say what with who? Because it's like that tiny E thing. Like boxers are just surrounded by guys that are like, you the man, champ. You the fucking man. And he tries to read. Reads like, for queers anyway. Yeah, you got a bunch of pussies putting words together in sentences and forming thoughts. You think all of his friends have to act like they can't read either? Oh, my God. If he gets, <laughs> Yo, can you read this for me? No, I can't either, champ. That's what I'm saying, man. Reads for pussies. He walks in. One of his security guards is reading like Shakespeare. He goes, I wasn't mad. He goes, what were you doing? He goes, I thought it was porno. I don't know the difference. He goes, man, it's, a, it's Othello. <laughs> he goes, all right. All right, champ. I love the classics. <laughs> goes, I'm sorry. Something that John Steinbeck just does to me. Christine, we're getting a bookshelf. Christine, we were talking about some things we want to get. Yeah. For a bookshelf, Christine goes, I think I want to get like one of those like nice collections of all the Shakespeare uh, plays. I go, it's pretty nice. you will... Never open one ever. Why don't you get some Lord Byron poems? Yeah, while you're at nuts? it. Why don't you get Dead Sea Scrolls while you're at it? Other Ooh. things you're not going to take a look at. Buy the uh, books you want to get. By the way, Sharer's Unauthorized Autobiography yeah. or something Andy like that. Andy Cohen's Guide to Come. <laughs> <laughs> Just get a real barn burner out there. We ordered a Madonna's Sex, which yeah. I'm pretty excited to have. Oh, Such a classic. Mad. So good at Shakespeare. Just- Oh, there it is. I haven't heard that so in a good while. Shakespeare. I haven't heard that in a while. If I came in, I'd be 
knocked on my ass. If I came home, Christine reading The Tempest. In a, yeah, she goes, mm. She goes. you know what my favorite is, The Merchant of Venice. <laughs> is Shylock thinks he's going to get his pound of flesh, but in actuality. She goes, Jay, you came in here. Let me read this stanza for you. <laughs> yeah, it's just such a ridiculous Duh. idea, especially when we need room for my Edgar Allan Poe anthology. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. The cask of Amontillado. Yeah, Jay likes to go classic American. <laughs> It was, uh, but you realized quickly it was a bad idea. Yeah, I said she dialed it back to. Like. She dialed it back to a couple to like. Now I think it's just Cliff Notes in a drawer. <laughs> she's gonna do the Spark series. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna she's, the, the, yeah. the yellow and black Cliff Notes. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. she somewhere. goes. This is what happened. <laughs> but you want to? I mean, listen. You're talking to a guy that has a book case in his house with the complete Calvin and Hobbes collection mm-hmm. and the complete Far Side collection. Makes more sense to me though. Which are both badass. Those you'll take a peek at in the dumper. You know no, what I mean? I won't take them into the bathroom. Christine's got to lightly dabble back into you know Romeo and Juliet. She You're goes, just not going to. There's something about reading Hamlet in the fall. Yeah. Why don't we get an encyclopedia set while we're at it? That'd be pretty cool. You guys Anything should get else? a full Encyclopedia Britannica. Do me a favor. Can you get some flints so we can light our candles and cigarettes with oh rocks? Oh, my God. I want to come in with one of those paper necks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Look, uh, fucking... She's going back to the... Yeah, she wants to go back to the olden times. Dude, I'm totally down with that. Can I do a powdered wig? Yeah. I just thought a Shakespeare set would be kind of fun for a bookcase. How big is the bookcase? Fun? <laughs> What's fun about that? Reading. I mean, Jacob gets me. Reading. <laughs> Jacob has a, bl- a blaring swastika poking out. <laughs> yeah, but it's pro Jew. Huh? The swastika? Is that what you think? Is yeah. that what you've been told? I oh, was you thinking, to stop hanging out with these white supremacists. You grew I was up with thinking this about this because the Nazis burned books. Uh huh. And I have the rise and fall of the Third Reich is you know Class. anti-Nazi. Why? Why they came to power? Why? How well, to avoid it? Well, the second half's anti. First yeah, half's the stop, rise. If you stop reading halfway through, it's actually a victory. But it, Hitler, am I against, crazy? Hitler got shot nine times and survived, right? Yeah. Then he Wait. put an album out. That's fifty cent. No, they I'm put an album out. to keep the book as is because it's kind of like the Nazis won in this case. Like if I get rid of that, then they've won. They want me to do that. You think you no? They want me to burn the book. You think he makes you look like a bad boy when ladies come yeah, over? Yeah, I don't understand. I'm there's a little, I'm never, a little, I'm a little there's self-hating. no edition of the rise and fall of the Third Reich that doesn't have a gigantic swastika. I don't know why they don't at least take it off the spine so yeah. that when you put it on... The spine's the, the tough part. That is a I tough one. I don't care about the front. Nobody's going to see it, but I don't know why. I, I have to explain to everyone why there's a gigantic swastika you know, in my well, book. Well, especially why it's next to a book called Killing Blacks for Dummies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a self, I'm a self-hating Jew. I mean, that's the one that really made it weird. He goes, I'm a self-hating Jew on the one on the right? Well, that's just for me. How you doing? That's when I realized Black Lou wasn't coming to that Joey Logano race. I went, Whoa. <laughs> I go, I go, has Black Lou been over here? And Jacob goes, no, thankfully. <laughs> he goes, no, thank God. Yeah. Probably wouldn't even make it to the neighborhood, quite honestly. Because there's a lot of rough guys around here. <laughs> he goes, All right. You live in a white supremacist part of a story, goes, Jacob? He goes, you got, yep. You guys don't know about Little Berlin? <laughs> it's a, little Auschwitz? <laughs> he goes, it's a five-block radius. All white, all Aryan, all the time. Welcome to Little Warsaw, motherfucker. Yeah, you get rolled if you ain't a hard ass. <laughs> Jacob's putting white laces in his big combat boots. <laughs> he goes, I don't know. What do you want me to do? Live in Jackson Heights with the heaves? I'm here. Fucking yeah, pussy. We find out Whoa. Jacob always has tiny little thin suspenders under all of his shirts. When he'll say it. <laughs> That's holding it up with a, with a wife beater. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Not welcome, motherfucker. Do you? Uh, <laughs> could you find any other illiterate celebrities doing reads? Because that Floyd Mayweather was pretty good, and I'm sure there's other ones. Why don't we take a break and then we'll come back? Because then we could also look up uh, sultry, inappropriate cheerleader things. When she looked that up, I saw a straight up list came up. Oh, well, why don't we just move forward to that? I mean, I'm sure illiterate celebrities will probably be. Well, we can always come back with illiterate celebrities. I have to take a violent dump. Really? Yeah. Violence. Uh, yeah. Can you make it the half hour? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. You think you have to make boom right now? I mean, if I make boom right now, I'm probably back in five minutes, and I'm good to go for like five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah. You want to time me? And then we're good for. We have to go to five thirty. Oh, don't do that. Yeah. Let me go right now. Let me go right now. I'll be all right. right. Everyone, we'll be right back. Dan's gonna poop its bonfire.
And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Bring in coming back. Yo, you liked it, that? Uh, Mott the Hoople. Jacob. Mott the Hoople's in the glass fishbowl. Are they doing all the young dudes? They're doing They the better only dudes. do all the young dudes hey! or going to be a fucking riot. All of the young dudes. Is that not it? A little songs. extra words in there. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I don't so the remember. song's called All the Young Dudes, not All of the Young Dudes. Well, it should be called that. Maybe Every it's... single one of the young dudes carry just... all of the information news. I think you're stupid, and I think your short lyrics are dumb. Why don't you uh, try to Why don't you try to read them? Why don't you try to read the lyrics? Why don't you give it a whirl? Hey, Mayweather, why don't you read the lyrics? Welcome Christine, back to the you're, bar. You're lost in a circle of, yeah, stop of fucking, good cheerleading. Stop looking bringing for inappropriate on. cheerleading. It doesn't come up when you type in inappropriate high school cheerleading. Probably they don't want to make that too searchable. Too sexy. So I'm Bang looking it. for no, it. No, do it like too sexy. Bang, Bang it. Bang it's, it. it. It's the Bonfire Conversation Radio Series XM95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big Jokerson. This is the Lost Tapes. Bing J. Okerson. Bing. <laughs> I love it. Jacob, your Bing has became my main source I take a lot of pride in that. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I mean, it's great. You did a great job, it's dude. It's a good thing, man. There you go. I get yeah. all plus, Cheerleading uniforms, too sexy for school. Yes. Plus, absolutely, that's the video. Yeah, plus, plus. Oh, I was doing that a lot when I was walking in my house yesterday. I was going, oh. 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 Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Holy moly. That's badass. It is badass. <laughs> so badass. Oh. Did you see the other one, Christine, up on the YouTube? Up, up on the YouTube? On the last page. Yeah, right there. Censored right there. Thank you. Yeah, but this was a... A news report. Yeah. So what? Gonna show it. How's that too sexy for school? At the Bonfire well, SXM, all, we'll tweet it out. The university's called Tight University. <laughs> T-I-T-Y-T? That looks like a porn university. <laughs> tight University. He goes, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> over here at a dean at Tight University... <laughs> They go, Dean Schlong? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this, I can get into uh, that. Professor Stinkhole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, oh, Professor Fatwad? <laughs> 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 Professor Jez? I mean... <laughs> Professor Curved Dong? Mm, I'm having a problem getting into my uniform. My butt keeps hanging out the back. So beautiful. Oh, oh, you're so beautiful. Is that not... Let's go full throttle. Let's do it. See me falling in love with you. <laughs> is this it? Is <laughs> it's the... not loading. Son of a bitch. What's going wow. on at Tight University? TYT. It was just... It's all these guys <laughs> talking. We're going down the other one. Are cheerleading uh, routines too much? Because that's what it really was. It was the routine routines. they were doing. was like very... They were like all humping the floor and shit. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah it was yeah. crazy. And then they made me stop taking pictures and video of them. You go, hold on. I'm that getting... was great. Then they asked me to leave. You go, this is a... Then floor. I had to go to some trial where they say I have to report whenever I move now. He goes, for what? For what? For then a... they went ahead and named that list after a young girl I took. Megan, Megan. I believe it. It was. Oh, it wasn't a list. It was a law. <laughs> and then... Oh. this Is this too sexy? I mean, come on, man. What? Look at these uniforms. Yeah, but it's always been like that. Dance uniforms have always been like They've always had, slutty. Yeah. Dance uniforms always had uh, teenage girls wearing... Garter belts, really? No, but if you do like a Chicago performance or your Fosse in high school, then yeah, the uniforms are like sexy things, like like, like swimsuits. It looks like they're wearing garters. Is they're the wearing thing. garter belts. What? They are wearing garter belts. That's but a lot. yeah. Our drill teams used to like. Oh they just yeah, bring up, bring up, the, bring up the. Oh, volume. really, Christine? You went to school with a bunch of sluts. Surprise, surprise. I was too fat for the team. It was oh. all like the hot girls. I know Christine put that out and look like pot roast. <laughs> if you <laughs> if you're gonna go for uh, black girls and marching bands and prancing around, go for Alabama uh, University Stingettes. Oh uh, well, don't worry. Lou just went into his favorites folder. Yeah, he goes. <laughs> uh, I could just send you the link, but I think it's more fun to find it yourself. Uh, I guess if you guys want to use my password, you can. <laughs> But really, if you like the arts, you're really supposed to support them yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Big butts on sluts is only there. Yeah, for already. It. How much more? I mean, come on. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it's also, again, it's also Holy the routine. I mean, that's the, the dusting off of the butt. It's not just the outfits. I like the other girls just looking past them. And they keep farting. Oh, it's tuba. Uh, Holy I, moly. That's what I would do. If I played tuba, I'd just give it to them. How great would it be if it... 
There's just a guy with a cigarette in the corner of his mouth tossing dollars. <laughs> <laughs> going, yeah, that's a sexy bitch. Where's the buffet here? Am I too late? He goes, is, uh, is Nightingale work here? This shouldn't be. That's too much. That for, sounds for like cheerleaders. college. Huh? That's college, right? Oh, never mind. It's sexy. fair play. Sexy, sexy. Sexy is sexy. No, I know, but should that be happening at a, a learning institution? Sure. <laughs> I'm Dan's, lost. Dan's lost in black ass right now. I am totally cool with it. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying. I'll be honest with you, Black Lou, honest to God, he's taking a nap. <laughs> this means nothing to him. He goes, What are you guys upset about? This show in school spirit. Yeah. You go, What? This girl's fathers don't drive a Maserati. <laughs> yeah, but I think it is like. The girl in the front just checked out. She just got her class about her. The girl's the front mm. like, you know what? It's like that one. It's it's like that video you, uh, that you showed when the girl gets jizzed on, and then she's like, well, like, realize the show on camera. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, oh, God, I love jizz all over me, especially in front of the camera. I have a family. Buddy. I remember the pom-poms. You know, you're talking about that. I, this, uh, what? Yeah, I'm going to save it for the live show. Okay. This is something you've already heard us do, but there's a great thing. Great subject. It's going to be really good. What a good way to tease something that happened two weeks ago. Oh, you guys remember it? <laughs> you, go, you remember how fucking much we Can I get you invigorated for it? It'll be fun Terminator time. Like, can I get you invigorated for it Termin- in backwards? And, yeah. are, and the people are going to go, that was good. It'll make yeah. people go back to that segment. Yeah. There's a video I saw today, Black Lou. You probably saw it. It's a girl. You go on World Star every day, like I do. Did you see the lady on one of those old lie detector TV shows? The game show one? I remember that segment. God damn, that was fun. Her and her husband. Oh, man. Remember that? How good that was? Jacob. So you took a couple of that for best of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For you remember sure. that? And then I got a text on my phone from a very heavy chested lady who said TF and time in Midtown. <laughs> I remember that. Remember that? That, that was crazy. That was a you crazy did day. it then. And you did it. I remember? And then I wrote a new joke that night and it solved sadness. <laughs> All. <laughs> Everyone's the sad. World. <laughs> Over the entire world. And then remember that night? I went home and J.O.'d to some BTs and then watched Nate kill it on a special. Uh, look, Chris, Have you watched Nate's special yet? Chris, which spe- Nate, I'm watching tonight. I'm watching it tonight. I'm watching too. it with Isabella, actually. Ooh, tonight. you're That's excited cool. to watch Uncle Nate's special, Isabella? I didn't know we were watching it. No, right. There's no Sixers game. <laughs> There's no Sixers, so you got to watch Nate Bargatze. Remember him? Remember that goofy slack jawed weirdo that lived around the corner from you? <laughs> remember? 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 That's so weird to me that I remember you in that house, that like when I would come over in Queens, when Nate and Laura lived around the corner. Mm-hmm. But you just grew up with like Nate and Laura were just like, oh, it's Nate and Laura. Yeah, Laura would watch me all the- after school a lot. Laura yeah. would, yeah. And she'd be like, all right, get off the couch. Isn't that weird that they, they're that their baby's six years old now? Like, so it, nuts. It's crazy. I mean, you did, they didn't even have a kid when you knew them. Mm-hmm. Isabella, you're 24. It's so <laughs> crazy. I've been keeping you young. <laughs> I've been giving you I have Munchausen I've been treating you like <laughs> I've been making you sick and weak so you need me inappropriate cheerleader awards Christine what is this you're looking also, at also why is it, it Pete was... why is Pete Davidson stand up on what are you watching Christine are you Jay Owen are you, are you Jay Owen to young Pete well, bring up young Pete this is like his first TV set he's like oh, it's only got 3.4 million views that's it's crazy Kimmel. yeah hi yay <laughs> how are you guys Cool. Uh, I wish I could say the same. I'm not very happy. I uh, I just moved out of my mom's house. He's got a head cold. I just turned 20. No, and, that's our impression uh, of him. Over. That's yeah. the way he talks. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Oh, you love it. I'm not going to make love it. I'm 6'3". It. All right, well, there he is. He, it's so weird to see like young Pete. when young TV sets pop up. Oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, look at Mulaney. I remember, There's Mulaney. I, I remember seeing a premium blend, and it was Patrice, Goldman, and someone else. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. Christine, what are the inappropriate awards given out to... It was like the girls had a, uh, an award ceremony amongst themselves, and it was like the String Bane Award, the Big Booty Award, and the and that's inappropriate? it was inappropriate. Moist Muff Award. Yeah. The, bo- uh, they said it was Body yeah. Shaming Award. Oh, <laughs> they go, tits, tits that don't quit. <laughs> yeah, Biggest and Smallest Areola Awards, both yeah. deserve an award. Yeah, Tightest Butt. Tight as butt. Who gave it to us? You were like, oh, loudest fart to practice. 
Since it's gross stuff. It's, it, it looks hilarious. I didn't realize that this set, Patrice just looks like he works at Office Max. Yeah. He's coming out to fucking tell you they don't have printer cartridges. I totally get it. This was the phase, this was the time also where you, as a big guy, would wear even bigger things to, you thought it made you look smaller. Man, and not realizing crazy. on TV, it makes you look extremely bigger. But isn't that crazy? The big, the whole baggy thing. Will baggy ever come back? I, I, I sort of hope so, but not as baggy as it got. You know what I remember? I don't need that anymore. I remember life. specifically Jay uh, at the cellar talking to Artie. This is before Artie's accident. And Artie used to wear – he was one of the first people we knew that wore skin-tight jeans. Yeah, yeah. Wore tight jeans and Jay's on stage. And he goes, Artie Fuqua, not Lang. Yeah, not Artie Lang. <laughs> Artie Fuqua. And, and Jay was on stage and he's like, Artie. Are you, do you, uh, he goes, do you just walk around the hood with those, those tight pants on? And Artie goes, yeah, Jay, yeah. He goes, are they like, oh, look at that spaceman with his tight pants. <laughs> and he goes, are you like a slutty chick and you have to wear clothes over your tight jeans? <laughs> <laughs> and then when you leave, you take your baggy jeans off and have your, dude, I'll never forget that. Just like I won't forget when Vecchione walks by and you go, it must be fall. Mike Vecchione in a smart zipper up. <laughs> goes, Did you walk into Old Navy and turn on your heel and go, I'll take all of them. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> yeah. uh, dude, it's funny what you remember, just like random shit like that. Oh, yeah. But I'll never forget the, Artie, do you wear baggier pants over your skinny jeans like a slutty chick wearing a sweatshirt out of the house? But I still get from this show. We had a caller way early days of this show that was speaking really frantic. And you did the, uh, you, when you did the speed thing, you're like, all right, pop quiz hot shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that yeah. made me laugh for yeah. weeks. Um, back to the slutty cheerleaders, because we were, of course, listen, folks, we were supposed to do part two of Behind the Curve, but Netflix crashed because Nate Bargetsy's special is so f- it's too fi- popular. As the kids would say, so fire. It's so lit. <laughs> What is this? High school dance battle, cheerleaders versus ballers? That looks like a pretty slay dance move for a child. I don't but know. No, well, by the way, I like the fucking coach taking a picture of their asses behind him, <laughs> it looks like. Yeah, just hit play. Cause this He's is- going to act gay. Yes, queens. Now do your kegels. I mean, kegels. Your kegels. Your I know kegels. Th- this is... Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's... But that, I swear, I know it's weird, but when I was growing up, I was like, that's just dancing. Like, that's how you dance. Like, dancing is kind of a sexy thing, and you got to train. Dude, if a girl that looked like that, dressed like that, walked up to me, and was like, you're stupid. It just shocked me back to fucking 10th grade. I'm like, you're right. I'm a fucking idiot. All right, I'm sorry. I tried to talk to you. No, but cheerleading was actually supposed to be like, go, Tingo. Uh, uh, is that what you think? They're actually uh, there as uh, motivators? Uh, <laughs> no. But I'm, I'm, what is this? That's well, not this a thing. Well, this is cheer competitions. They still do the, like, rah-rah part. Oh, Jesus. Those ass cheeks. <laughs> We're hearing all Christine's fat teenager sadness come out of her again. Yeah, she was, I really I heard, want to be a cheerleader. I really heard the cheerleading competitions were great. I don't want to che- be an outcast. <laughs> you didn't want to be a flag girl. I don't want to be a flag girl. I want you to be a popular cheerleader. You want to be a pom-pom. Yeah. Were they mean? The hottest girls on my no. school. The hottest girls in my school were on pom poms. Cheerleaders were like the. Uh, they had just the stacked bodies. They were just like fucking small and strong. Everything they from- flip and they do like flips and shit. Where like the pom poms were like the sexy ass girls that came out. Yeah. See, I had the opposite. I had the offer for everything that was like big and awful. And make it feel like goes. Hey man, we could really use somebody to carry that tuba. I'm like, no, I'm okay. Because I wanted to be. In, I wanted to be in the band. I wanted to do drums. So I had to really fight for that. Yeah. Like to get to play drums. They wanted me to do tuba when I wanted to play football, ultimately organized football. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, classic Shane, story. Shane loves yes, that. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, every, when I, they were like, you should be a wrestler. And I was like, I don't really want to wear that outfit and do that at all. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, come on, dude, you'd be great. They go, uh, super heavyweights. There's no one in, most schools don't have anybody who wrestles in that division. <laughs> Not that they don't have fat enough people, yeah. but m- most schools, uh, much like me, have fat kids who are like, I don't want to put that outfit on in yeah. front of a bunch of people. Yeah. And he goes, but if you're willing to just put that outfit on, <laughs> you will have a 100% success rate because no one's there to wrestle you ever. And you win by forfeit when they don't have anybody in the weight class. What a weird way to try to get a kid to participate in sports is like, hey, you're so big there's no other big kids yeah you'll just win do, hey man want to come hang out with us and just do the gay part of this activity mm-hmm. oh do you want to do the part that sucks which is mostly practice yeah you want to do nothing tough and just dress like a fucking queef do you in to, front of strangers to at make their school to make you feel better i was five and i wrestled 
And when I had the singlet on, I was like, this feels weird. I just hated it. At five years old, I was awkward with my body. Well, even at five, I probably had a hard time holding down that big fat donkey dick. You know what I mean? First off, it's a normal size. And at five years old, I Yeah, normal size for a donkey. You ever see how big a donkey's dick is? I take off my singlet and you go, oh, what do you got? You got some real eighth grade cock there, Soder. (laughs) Are you sure this kid's uh, kid's kid's not a senior? There's this kid. We, we, We forge in his documentation to make this kid wrestle down. Wait a second. Black Lou's making a face that I don't understand while he's watching what's going on. That didn't get you, huh? No, it got me. It just seems very weird, especially the guy on the left. It's almost like it's like this staged. Seems, this or... is staged. Oh, he's pretending he's gay so he can watch them change. I get that guy. <laughs> That's the only guy in this video I do get. I think these are strippers. All right, girls. Time to shower up. I'm going to make sure everybody's muffs are shaved and aerodynamic. We're getting to the Nationals next week. Taste test. <laughs> I want to make sure you guys are cleaning yourselves. Uh, you're good, Becky. Uh, you're good, Ashley. Uh, go. Uh, my estrogen's been kicking in. I'm going to need your girls. I'm going to have to take your girls' pubes and put them on my face. Hold on. I need a sip of iced tea to clear my palate. Okay, keep going. Uh, you're good. Uh, you're good. Your butthole's a little dirty. It tastes like nickels. Uh. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Wash your ass, Dorothy. Man, cheerleaders, just that face right there where they're just like laughing and looking at me, it could knock me right back down to zero. Well, here's why I've never been oh, real big on the cheerleader thing. I have no interest in pageant face. Do you know what I mean? That was the, you know what's so funny you bring that up, dude? I just remembered, I mean, I started smoking weed heavy uh, in high school. Tomorrow. And we were tomorrow and a later date. Uh, <laughs> but we used to go to high school basketball games ripped and i would always <laughs> laugh so hard at their faces when they would dance and, like, and they just do like that smile face and i remember just being like <laughs> just like a little shithead just like why are they so happy like, like that like, like yeah they gotta do like that <laughs> I, mean, I know it's more of a visual thing at the bonfire open it on instagram <laughs> <laughs> and I remember being like, what are they doing? I was just such a fucking loser. I was like, ah, they're not even into this. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean just the pageant face as far as just like the makeup and the whole like thing of it like looks so silly to me. When girls win pageants always, like they show you like the bodies on like Miss you know, Texas mm-hmm. competition. That's like the one most people say is probably the hottest one. Miss Texas? Uh, the Alabama's, the Texas, the, I mean, Ar- yeah. you know, the s- southern places uh, is where you'll get like... Beautiful the, women. Beautiful women. But they always, like their They're bodies are great. Them. And then they have like the hairdo of a 45-year-old and the fucking makeup of a great-grandmother. Yeah, they go, look at my body. You go, look at that smoking hot body. And they're like, you want to look at my face? <laughs> No, thank you. It's like far too much. And by the way, it's gotten way better now because they figured this stuff out. But I mean, with the hair and the. Look at that girl on the left. Yeah, it's too much. They look, honestly, they look like drag queens in the face. Yeah. Like it's that much makeup. Look at that girl all the way to the left. She's smoking hot. You could tell, but then she's got so much makeup on. Yeah, it's too much. Oh, there she is! Go to like 80s. Go to like 1980s pageant winners. I mean, that is just. That looks like a. They like go right from the pageant back to like being a receptionist at a fucking office building. And they go, I won, and they go, that's great, Donna. I'm gonna need the files. <laughs> yeah, on my like desk. all top tea, like hey, yeah, hi. The eighties, dude. AIDS was a gay disease. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great time, everyone. AIDS was a gay disease. <laughs> Eddie Murphy on top. Ah, uh, guy could not be stopped. Guns N' Roses just about to come out and change music forever. Motley Crue hated the 80s if you watch The Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Those guys right there. You want to talk about Me Too moments? That fucking guy. You think... Uh, a host for Miss Texas in the 80s, and he's not like, why well, don't we sample the goods? Go back to that. You think Bob Eubanks over there fucking... One of you very Bob. ladies will be named the first Fuck. runner-up and will receive a two... What of you, will, Christine, who what of you will die of a cocaine overdose in three years in a Camaro in Sam Kinison's house? <laughs> the other one will end up being a mom who pushes her daughter to the limit and ends up killing her. They all look like Jean Benet Ramsey, like when they do the thing with the photo to make them look older. Oh, yeah. Here's how she would be what if she, she was look alive now? today. Do that. You want to talk about creepy? It is Bob Eubanks. It is yeah. Bob Eubanks. You're thinking of Bob, Bob Euchre. Euchre. My bad. I'm thinking of Bob Euchre. And That's I was right. Small. Bob yeah. Eubanks. Uh, yeah. I mean, you want to talk about creepy? Children, children's pageants are the fucking creepiest. That is like the full on. You're like, what broken person thinks this is okay? Well, they finally let the uh, thongs in the in the swimsuit competition though, which I'm happy <laughs> about. I am happy, but I did lobby for that. Yeah. Little fucking little six year old butts. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. I mean, look at these. 
that like that mom. Like that's all her. That's like she's like you gonna be in look, I don't Look, she's just like I, I try, bring it up because I want to hear this. She's a bit of a I bitch. Hear, yeah. They always hate their kid a little she bit goes, too. Oh, well, you know, she wants to be out playing with bugs, and I just try to beat her into a place where she'll listen. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's like a kid. Put on your nipple tassels. I have never competed in pageants before, but I really enjoy Paisley competing. My bitch. Uh, just because it's, it, it is actually my hobby. Don't know if she would do it if it was her choice, but at this age, she seems to enjoy it. <laughs> Why are you punching her? Why you has her punching her? And I always love the dads are just such fucking doormats. These guys are always the biggest doormats where they're like, I'm basically forcing my daughter to do this and my husband's a nutless fuck. Yeah. So he won't do shit. I know. Well, you see, he's, he's, like, already, he's already agreed to they all wear red shirts together. Yeah, he goes, I oh, just, I'm oh, so proud of them. I am so da- Yeah, it's creepy, right, Jacob? Look at that it's picture creepy. right there, Jacob. Uh, no, really spank bank it, dude. Get it. Get it in there. That's Get it in gross. your head. Oh, my God. He loves yeah, yeah. it. I want to hear him. Those ass cheeks. Honest as I can be about it, but... <laughs> her name's Peppermint Paisley. They gave her a, fu- a porn name. See? See what I mean? He just said it right there. He goes, right here. <laughs> I don't want to fight with the wife. Are y'all excited? Not really. No. Going to pageants are... Kind of like going to a dumpster and picking trash out of it. Whoa. Are what? you making her natural or glitz? Making her glitz. When I say paisley and glitz, it's like, that's not even paisley. It's like my sister in a different... Yeah. It's hotter. He goes, I mean... <laughs> it's like my sister, but not my sister, and that's why I don't find that weird that I try to go into a room at night. He goes, whatever. What are you whoa, guys doing? Whoa, whoa, kid, kid. Goes, yeah, hold on, kid. And you go, hey, Mark, I think we might have a Netflix documentary here. <laughs> he goes, you want to start doing some tape that we can get some B-roll on for maybe in like 15 years? And this kid... One well, of these kids is going to get murdered. Uh, I feel terrible that we didn't get to behind, behind the curve. Guess what, everyone? That's, just, that's what they do in sweep week, Sweeps Week to bring you back. That's right. Will be more. Yeah. Oh yes, there oh, will be more. Oh yeah. Because I, I brought this up at the end, man. I mean, uh, that guy is like I didn't pick up on it. Maybe uh, that he was totally into that chick, and he just is like her buddy. Yeah. You didn't I think, mean, how old? Oh, we're behind the curve. You're talking about behind the curve. Why don't yeah. you bring this up when we watch it? When we do part two. But it's just nuts to me that any at his age, like you haven't gotten, you're still. Dude, I bet I could. Get, I bet I could get trapped like that if the girl's hot enough. I bet I could get. I trapped. gotta give myself credit, man. I never. Dan walks north to did. south of the island of Manhattan for a girl he didn't fuck for a kiss. <laughs> I think I did that once when I was a kid, and that was it. Like yeah, I never allowed I'll do it again. myself. I'll yeah, do it. I'm too fat. Right now. I'll walk six blocks for a chick, and then I'm going to Uber it. Yeah. Then <laughs> With her or without her. And he goes, and then I'm pulling her to the ground, horse collar tackle. <laughs> horse collar tackle. <laughs> I'm fucking pulling her down from behind, tearing her ACL. Uh, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Who knows what we're going to talk about? God only knows. I think we have a guest. We do. Oh, great. All right. It's going to be fun. Uh, you'll see. It'll be 24 hours from now, but for you, just a few minutes. Just a commercial or two. It's the Bonfire's Lost Tapes. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. It was, it was too, it was too, it was too pump fakes. It was this. It was like, alright, yeah, no, oh, fuck, all right. no one's biting. Now I've got to go on the run. I'm like Russell Wilson. I'm like, alright, fuck, they're coming. Fucking keep moving. Pockets get open. In. Fucking get open. God damn it, get open. It is the bonfire. Comedy Central Radio Series XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. It's the Lost Tapes. Yes. Joining us. A true macho man, David LaGreca from Busted Open. You probably, Hello, there he is. <laughs> Busted Open, uh, you can catch the 10-year anniversary party with Dave LaGreca and Hall of Famer Bully Ray and Mark Henry. A ton of special guests, uh, myself included. It's this Saturday, March 30th. Spoiler alert. Yeah, dude. I'll blow spoilers all day. 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern, Habanero Blues in New York City. So if you're coming to New York for WrestleMania, <laughs> come check out Habanero Blues on this Saturday. 
for uh, to two to four p.m. for the busted open ten year anniversary. They're gonna bring in a big cake at the end of the party, and someone's gonna go. Dan Soder's in that cake. Yeah, I heard him. He already said on the show he's and, here. And then they have to pull me out because I'm passed out because <laughs> I've been suffocated by sponge cake. Isn't <laughs> there for too long? It's like one of those magic fails we watch all the it's time. Supposed to be a cardboard cake, man. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys gonna have a cake? Oh, that's not up to me, man. If it's if it's a wrestling party and there's a cake, doesn't there have to be someone gets hit with the cake? Of course. But well, you know what? I will. I it. will say this. I break all the rules. I actually got married in a wrestling ring. All right. And it's been four years. So. Did you RKO her out of nowhere? No. Uh, that's what if I would have If you want to call it that. Sweet chin music? <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, uh, if you want to call it that, that. That's how you, that's how you give a, that's the I do's, is you just start slapping your leg. <laughs> you're like, he's tuning up the band. I got married in a wrestling ring, and then between dinner and dessert, we had a wrestling match. We really? had two wrestlers, two indie wrestlers wrestle. That is, man. I respect that. As a wrestling fan, that is commitment. And my wife... How did you get your wife... Did you see the 10-year-old boy just come alive and Dan on that one? He was so like, you can actually do that. (laughs) I haven't been that blown away since I saw one of those beds that's a ring. Uh, Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That was the same part of me. It's like like finding out that someone's got a... You have a cotton candy maker in your house? You have a trampoline? (laughs) You can make corn dogs at home? Yeah. (laughs) My wife is from Poland. Feel free to throw any Polish jokes. No, you want during I mean the usually they're only aimed at, at, at Lou Whitsky. We keep, uh, we keep a microphone away from Jacob because you start making Auschwitz <laughs> and Warsaw and bunch yeah. of Hitler jokes. Guy's got a swastika right in his bookshelf. It's no crazy. lie. I mean, proudly presented. It's <laughs> it is prominent in the living room. <laughs> so they're from Poland, man, and they're watching this and they have no idea. There's no pro wrestling in Poland. Oh, uh, the Polish other than Ivan Putski back in the seventies, they don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> so they're watching this and they, they have no freaking clue of what's going on. A lot of tilted. Heads. That's so funny. They think it's just like a Jewish yeah. dance. They go, it's uh, this is like one of their temples here. In the United States. One of their things. Yeah, and if anyone else that's American walks in and goes, Wait, you're getting married in a ring? <laughs> like if, she, if she had like an American cousin, she's like, What? You're going to let them get married? What the Christ is this? Olga, what are you doing? Uh, I try to pull a, a, a Polish name, but I don't. Know any Polish names? Ivan Putski, dude. I can't. Well, I can't uh, just reuse that one. Lou Witzki. <laughs> just saying things around you. <laughs> Lou Witzki. Ivan Putski. Kielbasa. Uh, Pierogi. Yeah. Pierogi. That, Keep I, that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, busted open ten year anniversary. Uh, I'm excited. I'm doing something with David Arquette. Yeah, wrestling gonna, him. Yeah, I'm gonna fight him. You could probably take him now. <laughs> he did a death match. He did a wrestling death match in L. A. In like and, yeah, he almost died. He got like cut open, like his throat was cut open. By did he light. really? Yeah. yeah. You remember in uh, Always Sunny when they did Birds of Prey, yeah. and, and then uh, you know when he gets his neck cut by Danny Rickety, DeVito. Cricket, Rickett. Yeah, Cricket, Cricket, Cricket. <laughs> when Cricket gets cut, that's the same thing that happened to David Arquette, kind of. <laughs> he legit got his neck cut. Yeah, like, like a fluorescent light right into the throat, like jugular. Like he had to get rushed to the hospital. He was in the hospital for like two weeks. He's a next level dumbass, huh? Yeah, it really seems like it. <laughs> I'm a fan of wrestling. Let me tell you where that's So stops. you are too, yeah. You're and they go fucking... like this. They go, do you want it? Can I hit you in the head with a fluorescent light? You want to take a fluorescent to the neck? <laughs> I'd rather not. I go, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll buy tickets. Why did he do this? Uh, he's a wrestling fan and he, look at this. Because they're not making a screen <laughs> seven? Yeah. This is he goes, I was really I was really in the pocket hoping they were gonna make a scream seven through nine like Star Wars. <laughs> My sister was a tranny. Uh, that, uh, he... Got he went to the hospital after that, right? Yeah, he was in. And you're doing it in front of like 80 people. Like if you're going to do it in front of 80,000 fans, yeah. like WrestleMania, I get it. But in front of like 80 people, what are you doing? Well, Jay, I David Arquette, yeah, Could be in David Arquette, <laughs> yeah. man. You know he was the champion in WCW. I do. He is a man without a plan right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's swinging it air. He. I don't know what's going on. Patricia Arquette's on Hulu. She looks 105 years old. Something <laughs> happens to that family, man. They age like fucking pears. <laughs> they bring back. A- they bring, they bring back a haunted tiki from Hawaii like the Brady's. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck happened to that family? The Arquettes, boy, they were writing Toto songs about the Arquettes in the yeah. 80s. Oh, yeah. It's all gone. Rocks. <laughs> yeah. No, not uh, Rosa. 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 Yeah. That was like 40 years ago, though. But still. So? Yeah. Yeah. What a fall from grace. I don't know what you're saying, Look, Rebecca. The music holds up, buddy. I was just talking about her. You yeah. know, Is that how we cut our promo? Lot. You got a problem with Toto, brother? <laughs> oh, let me tell you something. I've felt the rains of Africa. You're about to feel the rains of these fists. Go back to that picture, Christine. She was a sex symbol. She was the show. so hot, Patricia Arquette. Now she's a frumpy mom. Well, she's yeah. it's 2019, though. You can't hold up like that. 
Yeah, apparently not. Who holds up like that? Me. I look better than I did whenever. Well, that's because you modified your diet and you've gotten into exercise. Look at Alabama Whirly. Same person. Yeah, you're right. She hit the wall hard. Same person. She must have done a bunch of death matches. (laughs) <laughs> with, she took a death match on with elasticity she's been doing non-stop death goes, matches since true romance she goes let me tell you something elasticity you think you can hold my chin up I got something for you sister 2019 I'm letting this chin go put her in the whirly yeah. put her in the whir- look at her yeah that's bad but that's I bet, time that's really bad. just kicked her right in the face and puss and but dents that, and belly yeah and ass <laughs> and probably calves <laughs> Jay, I took, Jay went to. Feet probably look pretty rough. <laughs> Jay and Christine went with me to Raw after, uh, SummerSlam, and Jay, it was like a wrestling fan in the 80s, and You're he's You're saying like, it wrong. Me, Christine, and Dan went Raw after a show. We were Raw. After we just SummerSlam. Care. We just spread diseases. <laughs> it was, you know what? You like it raw. If we're yeah. getting AIDS, we're getting it. Dude, it was August, and I was like, it's like yeah. putting on a sweater in the summer. The whole time Dan kept saying, didn't they cure this for two people in yeah. London? And I was like, I do. I think the science is in on that. I go, if we have if we have the money, can't we get out of this? <laughs> Can we get out of it? Can we take this risk if we have the if financial basket? AIDS, will we be the next two who beat it? Probably. <laughs> Can we beat Duck and King? Uh, <laughs> Taking the duck. Yeah. So I took it, and it was. Uh, I'm like a real wrestling yeah. fan, and Jay's an old wrestling fan that's out of it, and you know, was kind of going to, to hang out with me. He's going to hang out with his buddy, and he always talks about. I love it. I had to curb Bump my my fandom because the Shield came back, and the second I heard, burner, burner, I was like, oh, oh, and then Jay was sitting next to me, <laughs> like, so I did. So fuck? I did this. I went. Oh. <laughs> all I felt, and Christine can support this, all I thought after going to that event was bad. I felt very, very bad because... That's, you almost fought a cab driver right after that. I did almost fight a cab driver. <laughs> I right think that. that's where you put your you funneled your feelings. I don't know. I felt really bad because the place would erupt of these things that I'm not in the know of right now, and they would go... It was you the know. Raw after SummerSlam, so it was like a lot of stuff. There was a lot of yeah. stuff going. He had no, you were completely lost. Season 42, episode 26. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, it was called Shield Gets Back Together. <laughs> if you're looking it's, it up. it's called The Shield Unites. <laughs> Go real quick on Hulu, you'll find it. It's, uh, no, but when they did, when they came out, we were with another comedian, Dan St. Germain, who couldn't have given a shit that I was there or, or worried about what he thought my judgments would be, but Dan sees me every day. <laughs> also, Jay's kind of like, uh, I look at him in a way of like an older brother. So you're like, but like an older brother that lives with dad and I live with mom. So when he shows up, I don't want to give away all my really secret nerdy shit, you know? Hey, like, Lou, is Dan calling me old a whole bunch today? I mean, dude. Probably about the fifth time he said it. That's right. I'm working <laughs> you in a promo. I'm doing the slow fucking Jericho. Let me tell you something, Grandpa. I'm doing, I'm going, you know, Jake's hips, Jay's hips. <laughs> hurt when it walks a long distance he gets arthritic when it's cloudy but it really was a thing where i didn't want to let him like dan st germain i'm fine going yeah. nuts sal, no. Vol- sal Volcano, i'll go nuts around crazy because i know the wrestling thing but when that sam shield, roberts when, sam, oh yeah sam when yeah. the shield yeah. came out by the way in fairness to me i was smiling the entire time i was not laughing at it i was enjoying it i thought it, i was enjoying how silly it was yeah, yeah. and over the top and it was great it made me uh, enjoy I, I enjoyed it like I would enjoy wrestling at any time. But I don't know the cheer things or why I'd be excited about these particular people coming out. Uh, I know Roman Reigns is the guy who has uh, gotten and beaten cancer several times. I know he's 2-0 and against cancer. That's What a great thing to only know him from. <laughs> yeah. cancer know, I know Roman Reigns is a cancer survivor. And he's a little teapot, short and stout, and for some kind of an insurance company. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in a commercial. And he's, he's always got, constantly has wet hair. And his, his hair, hair is, is always wet. wet which is a guy who had long hair that cut it because it always looked too dry. I get it. <laughs> um, so you're basically saying you could be a Roman Reigns fan easy. It'd be easy to suck me. If you give me one one of these from the audience, she's like a, a wink and a, a <laughs> little finger a point. Fist pound. A fist pound and for, I'll buy his merch. Uh, and none of it fits me. So uh, when it was over, when it was it over, you're like, this was horrendous or you're like, I'm back in or it's just like in Had a blast. What I felt bad particularly was when the shield reunited and he heard the music, the place went bananas. Uh, I stayed in my chair because I didn't know. So I was just sitting there smiling. And Dan definitely wanted to go bananas with everybody. That was a big moment. And he starts to jump up. And he starts to jump up. And then just like he looks over at me. And I'm looking at him just smiling. And he looks over at me and sits back down and just goes like, yes. Like, 
He <laughs> held it in. <laughs> Why? There's no reason to. Oh, I don't know, man. You're it was something in him. I'm not taking the blame for yeah, that. Yeah, he should have no, felt good. That yeah. was not. That was. I wouldn't totally, have judged or anything. I was so happy. That was so not happy. him at all. And I wouldn't put any of the blame on Jay. You 100 <laughs> percent psychologically <laughs> saw what happens when an only child enjoys wrestling his whole life and then gets someone around that he feels is family, older family, but family. <laughs> yes. and, like, and it's like, and it's like, there's the thing of like being like, yeah, I, I do this in private, but it's different. Uh, no, I know, I know what that's like because I have a brother yeah. who can't stand wrestling. So you just criticize him. When we were kids, my father would drag him to the wrestling matches with so me. So your dad was into it, but so... Well, he, he was wasn't. into it because I was into okay. it. So, yeah. you know, when you got a brother, they have to come to everything you go to. So he would get dragged in. So he is a, a host in New York on ESPN Radio with okay. Michael K. So they had Shane McMahon on the show. And Michael K. and Peter Rosenberg are asking all the questions. And yeah. my brother, and it's on Yes. And they have the camera on my brother. And he's just got his head down like miserable son of a bitch. It's 2019. This yeah. is 35 years ago. He thought he's he was out. still pissed off about it. He thought he was out. He was like, I'm yeah. out. I don't I'm got like, to deal I'm with this. I'm out, man. This is bullshit. That's this, not a real sport. Fake, I'm not talking about fake this. Fake gay fighting will no longer pollute my life. I don't know if he said gay. Gay, yeah. But he did the fake fight. That's he was thinking gay. I, uh, <laughs> he was thinking it. If he wasn't saying it, he was thinking it. He was thinking it. <laughs> I, uh, Dan told me yesterday, I can't believe you can gamble on wrestling. You can gamble on anything. But how can you gamble on legit sites on wrestling when there, it's a predetermined thing? Spoiler well, alert. <laughs> it's a predetermined thing. It's, it's still yeah. real to me, Dan. <laughs> it's still real to me, man. That's the best. Uh, I mean, nothing's better than that clip. Uh, can you bring up that clip of that guy saying it's still real to me? Uh, they do prop bets that that kind of makes sense. Like, uh, Black Lou was telling me, like, some of the bets he was making, he's like, how many suplexes do you think Brock Lesnar is going to hit Seth Rollins with? And that's a that's a good bet. Yeah, like, you don't know. Could be a, I think what would be fun would be uh, over-unders on time. Yeah, they do time that. Time of match. They that, do, that would make sort of sense to me because you can't really – that can be like uh, down to a very specific thing, you know. So unless you're one of the wrestlers and you put money on the match, and then you just have a, you know, you have a timed out. You're like, I'm yeah. gonna get rolled up now. One, two, three. Jimmy Snooker constantly looking at the clock. Yeah, this is I weird. How old am I, Jimmy Snooker? Uh, Jimmy Snooker. Uh, <laughs> you have to be a degenerate man. if you're gambling on pro wrestling. Like you, you have that black a... Lou. Turn the camera around on yourself. <laughs> He's talking about you. You gambled on no. wrestling before? Really? That's how we talked about it yesterday. Wow. He was putting bets in. He how always, many bets did you put in? He always bets uh, on black. Ten bets. Ten bets. Ten bets. <laughs> How man. much? Like ten a, ten a bet? Um, no, it's a DraftKings thing. So he okay. bets like it's the streets, like in real fights in the streets. He always bets on Kofi Kingston. <laughs> yeah, only, but he lays heavy. Heavy. <laughs> He's like this guy's never going to lose to these white boys. He knows this guy. Oh, Jay, if this guy threw you a wink and a fist pound, Roman Reigns, look how cool he looks. I'll kiss him on the mouth if he acknowledges me. Oh my god! If he knows who I am, I'll date him serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop seeing Christine. I'll move her out. <laughs> Oh, there's. Yeah, I mean, yeah, oh. you got to play it. It's just fantastic. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you? Right there. Just yeah. The um, I just want to thank each and every one of y'all for all you've done to your bodies. <laughs> it's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> I'll be. Man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. He just goes. You're awesome. The, what, thank you so much. I Black forget who it was. The- Someone's uncomfortable. He goes, take it easy, man. <laughs> Some guy's like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, I was going to say the black guy behind him's like, I ain't a fan like that. Yeah. He goes, man. I, I just, just like to watch it. He goes, I was, I was hoping to see Ric Flair and some of them shoes on. <laughs> He's like, this, this white boy losing his shit. I just want to say, can I kiss one of you? That's a Scotty from fucking Boogie Nights moment. But uh, I'm into things as much as you're into wrestling, so I get it. But your defensiveness over it it does come early, I think, sometimes. You said the radio guys was my favorite when they just got got furious. Furious. I hear you like wrestling. So fucking what? You like stuff? Dude, I went after them. It was in Albany, and I was doing doing morning press. Uh, Yeah, I mean, you know, it wasn't as much. But the guy was like... uh, it was. It wasn't the wrestling thing that set me off. It was how I, I saw what he was doing because he was doing morning press for the Funny Bone, and he's like, "I said something about watching wrestling." You know, I was like, oh, "I watched some wrestling last night, went to sleep." And he's like, "All right, all right, we're gonna do the interview." And then he's on air, and he's like, trying to ask me questions about billions, oh, yeah, which I knew at first. Where he's like, "Hey, we got Dan Sauter. He's gonna be at the Funny Bone <laughs> this Thursday through Saturday." Dan, you're on billions. You play M- McPhee on billions. It's like, yeah, it's McPhee. And you're like, "All right, well, there's a scene where you kiss Wendy Rhodes." Do you do more this season? Are we going to see some whips and chains? What's going on? And I'm like, nah, man, I don't think so. You know, I'm kind of divided from that side. And he goes, all right. 
So you watch wrestling. Is that a real thing? Is that an actual real thing? Oh, God. And I was like, yeah, man. He's like, when's the last time you watched wrestling? I was like, I watched SmackDown on Tuesday. And he's like, all right. Well, tell me something that happened. What, I mean, you're really a grown man watching it. And I was like, what do you like? What do you like? <laughs> I bet there's something you like that I could find that I find stupid. And he's like, like what? And, uh, and then I just went off. Transgender pornography. He goes, fire. There's, there's no way you can find anything. Everything I do is cool. <laughs> Pedophilia. <laughs> he goes, is it not cool? Why do they make so many documentaries about it? Overseas pedophilia, that is. Yeah. Where it's completely legal. Children cockfighting. It's something I've been doing. It's super cool. Uh, it's the last show I've ever been on. Maybe the first show I've ever been on. Uh, radio show. The same morning same show. show. I just did it recently, and when I pointed out how weird it was, Dan was like, oh, yeah, I had this thing with him. That's so why he told me that story. But when you go in there and the guy's like, hey, man, thanks for coming in. It's really cool to see you. And then that guy is the guy on the show when they're like, you know, they're like, hey, Rufus, what do you think of that? Like, I know, we should get some beers. You're like, is this the fucking guy that just shook my hand off? <laughs> what happened to you? Like, warn people that you do a doofus character. Wayne's World 2 did it perfectly. The handsome dam. It's like <laughs> yeah, that yeah. really what it is. It's what it feels like sometimes when you're on a comic on the road. Like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to be... At the funny bone. That's why uh, I almost threw a leg drop on the Bob and Tom's console. Woo! You want to talk radio beeps, baby? Don't you bring me in at six in the morning and dis- dis- disregard me because I don't yeah. want to tell my filthy X-rated bits on your Midwest stupid Maybe show. we can do a three on three. I'm like, cutting a promo serious. on them. Let's, yeah. do a, let's do a six man tag. I'm, Us three versus three local radio DJs. I'm in. The three horses. I'm in. Woo! I mean, I, what are you talking about, local? Some some people here, man. No, man, some we go outside here. of it. We do at an Sirius invasion. XM. We do a WCW invasion. <laughs> some people here at Sirius XM don't do good uh, radio. Well, you know, I don't know like, if you run, no, it's when it run comes, mostly by robots, if you were wondering. When it comes to wrestling, too, though. I get it in the hallway. What do you do? I host Bust It Open. What else do you do? Oh, uh, like, all right. You know, are you know, a you machine that plays the same yeah. 30 songs over and over again? Because <laughs> yeah. that's what they like to hire here. And Just, then you mentioned Sam Roberts before. That guy's gone total heel. He's got the beard going yeah, and everything, dude, man. He's, he's in with the company? Yeah. Is that, is that, yeah, are dude, we setting that like, up right now? Yeah, I'll tell going you what, I'm going to see him tomorrow morning. Yeah, we starting a little race. Is Sam getting involved in actual WWE? Dude, he hosts. He hosts uh, the NXT pre-show. Really? Like, yeah, they like host shit for him. Hell yeah! He's like in when when Che got me into Raw twenty five when we were backstage. Uh, Sam that was hair just really a, worked out for him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was either going to go with him or against him. That was it. it, was, it him. was that, or he was going to be the last clown getting out of a fifty two clown car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what, do you think Vince no, I love Sam. That's fucking awesome to no, get Sam's that be, be, be into something like that. Dude, to be, be a fan, that deep. and he's like been a fan. You know, he's been a diehard fan his entire life. I mean, we all are, but it's like crazy to see someone get how many Sam Roberts affiliation with WWE holes in your wall do you have? Uh, none. No, but you def could, yeah, you, I mean, pun- could you punch the strong wall? I try. I you know the, where the studs are. I the studs. <laughs> he goes, look at this. Look, I go look at this knuckle. I go, hey, Jay, look at this knuckle reconstructed twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you find you follow a nail. You go, go and Sam Roberts. Vecchio <laughs> goes. I'm going to the Vecchio goes. I'm going to the store. I go right now. Okay. <laughs> and then he walks out. I go. <laughs> King of the Sam ring. <laughs> Sam Roberts. <laughs> I just say, whenever I hurt my hand, I just say pay per views. <laughs> Summer Slam, that one hurt. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, Starcade, that hurts. <laughs> oh, Survivor Series, I think I broke something. I'm saying the old man ones. Yeah. Starcade. Can- Halloween Havoc, that oh, was a son of a bitch. Great uh, Bash at the Beach. <laughs> bash at the Beach, that one stung. F- bright colors sting. <laughs> <laughs> do you think there's any way we could get Jay into wrestling? Like uh, yeah, I we'll wonder. I'd love to have something to watch that much. Uh, I really do. Sometimes I'm looking for shows when I'm two out. Two hours of programming a week. Absolutely. And and Sal Volcano said he watches it, and then uh, Fran said she got into it. Yeah, Fran got into it uh, from it. So it's just like I don't know. Like I'm uh, guessing non WWE. I'm New I'm Japan. Thinking, yeah, like New Japan or Ring of Honor think, or something like uh, that. I think maybe. he's friends with Jericho. I think AEW would probably. AEW, dude. And that's brand new. It's getting off. It's it's. Uh, I'm going to the first pay per view in May. Listen, my favorite time in re- when I was a kid, I loved all of it because I, I could watch. You know, that's when they used to 
pretty much give you the fan like Brett the Hitman Hard versus Bob Foster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lay your bets on yeah. those fights. By the Lou. way, they started they started showing old WWF superstars on the network, and you're right. A lot of those matches are just like schlubby. <laughs> games. Say, and my favorite thing is they always describe like uh, his re- real life while he's like doing the rope pull, and they're like yeah. Bob Foster is a pretty decorated local high school wrestler. Yeah, and he, yeah. Uh, no father of, oh, father of two. Oh, or they just completely, it just looks like a super, Hairy chest. Yeah, superhero versus a guy that works at a fucking big O tires. <laughs> yeah. But you knew who was going to lose the match when it had no tan. Yeah. Like the, the jobbers have no tan. That's what I'd do. If I was a jobber, I'd just go get super bronzed. <laughs> and you show up and you're like, this guy about to fucking win? Because I'm going George Hamilton. You're going to main event me, motherfucker. <laughs> just get one of those reflecting lights in the back of the fucking arena. <laughs> they go, Dan, what are you doing? I go, yeah, I know I'm up against the crusher. What are you doing? He goes, growing in this business. Yeah, they go. All right, well, your match with uh, Braun Strowman's next. They go, yeah, I think it's going to go different but, than they think. But when I watched it back then, I, I loved all of that. I collected cards. I gave a shit about the cartoon I loved. Magazines. You bought the magazines? All the magazines. Had all the... And I went back to having the toys that were like... <coughs> You know, the, it was the Iron Claw. What's the guy's name? Uh, uh, with Von Eric? Well, yeah, no, no, it wasn't. I, but I had all the Von Eric. I, I watched all the WCCWs. All right, the, man. Uh, all AWAs. Right. All. I mean, I was read the wrestling uh, it's magazines fun. a lot because those magazines also back then were violent as shit. They all were like bloodshot, blood all covered, all massive man. bloodshots, and, and it was all. Also- I fucking gave a shit about all that up until WWE, and then I just for whatever reason lost it. Uh, but briefly. Like, probably young teens, I stopped giving a shit. And then when it came back to the Monday Night Wars time, by that point, I was, like, way deep back in. I remember, so you got I remember back Goldberg, in Goldberg winning two in one night to win the belt against Hogan. They had to beat yeah. Hogan just, like, on an on-the-fly match. On a Monday. Yeah, at the Georgia right. At the Georgia Superdome. So I was a fan, for sure. And then I just, like... Just lost uh, touch with it. I guess, Did you get into ECW at all? Because I figured loved you'd be into it. ECW. I loved yeah. it. We used to go to just a CYO, and you'd watch... What I can only describe as crimes happening in a Christian, <laughs> in a Christian youth organization. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It was crimes. Yeah, uh, they were committing crimes. And the new Jack comes out. He goes, "We were, I was committing crimes in the ring." I'm like, yeah, because he was a criminal. Like, <laughs> yeah. this, be, this guy would be great. What a gimmick. Yeah, it's so weird how much how much more like you think about that that time, like the Attitude Era and the Monday Night Wars, as far as wrestling goes. And that was like hardcore, a lot of blood, a lot of weapons. They were doing a lot of uh, of, of adult shit. Yeah, and then they and just went- the storylines of a thing like there had to be. An, I heard the last thing like this that was like this, and it was not in my time of watching. Was CM Punk seemed to have like a like a pretty real thing? Yeah, it was on- called it's called the pipe bomb. Uh, it was called the pipe bomb promo. Yeah, but, but, where he he kind of came out and just did. He like talked. But I, I and I'm still. Am I correct that like those Monday Night Wars when they were going to each other's arenas, like that wasn't scripted shit with the both places? You don't know. You don't That's, know. That was you the still thing. Don't that know, was like right? the beauty. You didn't know what was what was real, what wasn't. And they real. did it. They it did it. Awesome. They did it perfectly with NWO. I mean, that was like the perfect thing because I was a kid. So seeing a guy that I knew as Razor Ramon and Diesel show up and just have the, their legal names. Yeah. You didn't have the internet. You, you couldn't yeah. be like, well, the internet was that's out. That's coming. Yeah, yeah. Speculation yeah. only. No, but you, they, all of a sudden they were just on Monday Nitro and you're like, wait, that's his name's Scott Hall. I thought it was Razor Ramon. Yeah. And then I'm like dealing with the fact that I'm like, this guy's been lying to me. He's not a, <laughs> he's not a <laughs> dangerous <laughs> Latino from Miami. Then when the internet comes out, you find out Scott Hall's been wrestling for 37 years yes. before that. He was in the AWA at the must. Stash Never looked anything like the way he looked yeah. as Razor Ramon. Yeah. If you look back at the 80s, though, when you're growing up watching wrestling in the 80s, if that happened now, all the heels would be faces and all the faces would be heels. Well, that's what Austin did. Austin kind of made being a heel cool. Yeah. He made it in, in, in the time of the anti-hero with like Tony Soprano and all that shit. When it was like coming up, it was like, yeah, it was good to be fuck the system. It's, yeah. There was no Walter White without Stone Cold. You know what I mean? Yeah. But The Rock, you know, he was the same thing. But The Rock was like, but The Rock was a different kind of anti-hero. He was like, oh, bravado. Like I can be big and be egotistical and be like I wear silk shirts. Lewis has that story when you know he was like Lewis says he went to go meet the Rock and the Rock stopped signing autographs and he walked away and Lewis was like oh but I wore this shirt and it's ten thousand dollars but he was like a kid you know and the Rock's like there's no way that he just like said something back to Lewis like that shirt ain't that much and like winked and walked away yeah yeah that's it's, pretty awesome yeah because like Lewis was super in he went to like WrestleManias and shit yeah well if you think of like Adrian Adonis who's like one of the biggest heels from the eight, he would be like a face today he's like a funny you, face you booed him because he wore pink he was but, a guy that wore pink that's also, why when I was him. when I when I was young and my dad. Uh, is one who kind of got me into what was cool that I got to go see live 
at the Civic Center in Philadelphia yeah. was we'd go see NWA. When I was young, NWA was there my favorite. Yep, mine and that too. was a uh, and I don't know what I always just called it NWA, but when I see the Four Horsemen stuff, it's called WCW. World Championship yeah, Wrestling WCW. already? Well, because WCW, WCW basically bought the rights to Yeah, but I, I swear to God, I thought it was called NWA. I was, it was. Lost, but, but, it uh, was. For a while, it, it was, was NWA, and then it turned into WCW. WCW. That, that, big, big, deal, that big gold belt, you yeah, know, the yeah. one that's synonymous with Ric Flair? Uh-huh. That's the NWA. That was the that's NWA belt. championship. The NWA. But they, and then uh, WCW just took it and turned it into But those, belt. like, you know, that was so fun to watch those guys. But I remember going to the Civic Center and seeing uh, Fist of Stone, Ronnie Garvin versus gorgeous Jimmy Garvin. There you go. Their valets were always slutty hot. Yeah. It wasn't like the <laughs> athletic hall like it was then. It's like, this is a girl who's probably getting passed around the locker room, so and then they were like, hey, you want to walk out with me? And so there's like, a, I can put on panties for five minutes. There's just some guy, some fucking Philly trash in there watching it, pulling out a Paul Mall, going, there we go. <laughs> All right, Ronnie Garvin, fucking there we go, dude. But uh, Magnum TA, I saw a scaffold match with the Road Warriors versus Rock and Roll Express. That's, that's awesome. Cool. Ricky Morton and uh, yeah, dude, Robert no, Gibson. I mean, Those I, are my favorite. I used to draw them a lot. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> I love awesome, it because it's like, you find out where your fandom went as a kid because it, 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 it's huge it's awesome and by the way nwa was like uh growing up listening to good music because i grew up listening to the wwf or, yeah. or watching the wwf and then you go back and you find out about the nwa and you're like oh it's like you knew about punk like yeah, i learned yeah. about zeppelin in my 20s i didn't i didn't my mom wasn't putting on you know three while i was sure. in the room it was like steve winwood it was alcoholic music <laughs> the whole time <laughs> It was all shit that you're like, I can fucking drink during the day and not feel bad listening. I Rupert at, Holmes. <laughs> yeah. oh, Rupert. Bum, bum, I always bum. looked at WWF like pop music and like yeah. NWA was like metal. Like, it was. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I got into it when I when I learned about NWA. And the I, Steiners were in that Yeah, shit. but I knew all of them from WCW. And to me as a kid, WCW was like the methadone. I was like, oh, well, WWF is on Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings, and then eventually Monday night. Yeah. And uh, WCW was on Saturday nights. So I was like, hey, I'm fucking eight. I don't go out on Saturdays. I'm going to watch wrestling. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I wish I could remember the fucking, uh, the song. It was just whatever the song. I, th- I always think it's the same music that the Bulls used to come out to would be like the music they would play when they were showing like their yeah, uh, upcoming seri- events and like, stuff. Uh, serious. Like it was that like uh, yeah. Alan Parsons project or Yeah, it was very like weird. Music where they would say like yeah. what events were coming yeah. up and stuff, but it was it all seemed so local. Coming to Woodbridge, New Jersey. There you go. Oh, look at this. Yeah, it's like that's like old. Sh- we'll we'll tweet this out at the Bonfire SXM Worldwide Wrestling, and it's like, yeah, dude, look at all those. Dudes. Those are like but guys. I could tell you the guys. That was Fist of Stone. Wahoo Robert. McDaniel. You got Ronnie Gar. Dude, I used to watch this on like the local Patterson channel. It was in Spanish. It didn't even look have it in English. Oh, dude, that's great. But uh, I like but those Nikita, are like guys Nikita like Volkov, Magnum TA was Boogie Woogie Man, thing? Jimmy Valiant. Uh, oh, Dusty, Dusty Rose. Dusty. But I'll tell you this: like, I'm d- such a loser. I know <laughs> every. I'm, so, I, I'm sitting here on your show. I'm, I'm talking about pro wrestling wearing a kids T-shirt. I love it. Are you gonna go see Kiss tonight? Than that. Yeah, I'm going to go see Kiss. I'm going too. Hey, you guys there are both going. Go, Hell yeah. Okay, so we're doing a little stack break. Where do you got? Where's the? Where's the? Um, where's the show? MSG. <sighs> That's I've never awesome. seen him before. That's why so, you came so. in all You've rock and roll. You've never seen Kiss before. I don't know why you're going. going. I'm oh, going. really? Yeah, I'm going by myself. You're just going. You're going solo. <laughs> There's people there, though, like Joey from Z Rock and stuff. Oh, awesome, dude! Yeah. What a what a bachelor night out. Oh yeah, With Kiss. <laughs> Jay's big night out. <laughs> yeah, Jay's big night out. Better not get into wacky adventures. <laughs> well, I, don't know. I yeah. told my wife about it. She was like, "Yeah, right. Okay." Yeah. She's like, in, "Yeah, <laughs> she, dude, you've already you've already stated she's Polish. She can get away with anything." <laughs> he was like, well, "He's like, I'm gonna go see King and a, a Kiss in a wrestling ring." She's like, All right. "The fastest fucking yeah, time as fast as shit." I was supposed to meet up with like Bully Ray and Jericho forever. at this Kiss concert. Like it was Bully, Bully Ray, my co-host, and Jericho yeah. are going to the Kiss concert. They actually invited me. Like my buddy got me a ticket. And we're yeah. like in the nosebleeds, and yeah. they're sitting like in the front row, and they offered me like a ticket, and it's just one. <laughs> oh. I would have to ditch my friend, and you it's know like, what? Uh, can't I mean, do that. Come on, buddy, here's all right. Here's my philosophy on that. <laughs> it's a mixture of you being a wrestling fan and a Kiss fan. That it comes together for you to take that ticket to watch the last Kiss tour. The, your friends have to understand. You meet up with them first. It's, it, it's not like a bunch of guys. It's one dude. So like, if I leave oh. him, he's by himself. You know what I'm saying? Do, oh. I could do. I if it was use two, I would, yeah. I would excuse it. That's yeah, tough. One friend, and you're like, you stay up here. I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. I'm gonna I go have you. a. I'm gonna go have a, I'm gonna go have a memory with legends. <laughs> See you later, buddy. 
Oh, man. And you know this, too. Bully and Jericho, they would freaking blow me off in a second. <laughs> like, they invite me. To, hey, oh, well, Greg. Oh, yeah. And then next thing you know, they're with their cool <laughs> friends. Yeah. And I'm all the way in the back. So, like, get the fuck out of here. Well, I'm going to see you at the 10-year anniversary for Busted Open. Which so. is yeah, this man. Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. It's been a pleasure there to meet you, you, man. Yeah. Thanks, brother. It's nice Super being fun, you, man. man. I, for, I forgot to say on the air, uh, Jay was running a little late. And Dave walked in. And I was like, yeah, Jay didn't want to do the segment. He didn't so want to do the break. <laughs> and then there was a moment. I thought I was being pretty. I thought we had to start at 5 o'clock is what I was doing. Yeah, no. It was fine. I was saying. But it, they, he He's got here like, with me, baby. He got like here at 457. And I was like, yeah, Jay just. Jay's going to be here. So, uh, he's yeah, going to yeah, want to do it. And he, and, uh, I Let me tell like, you something. Like, Rekha. Yeah, just slap yeah, him. Yeah, because 4.57 so do, early. You, you do know, the, you, for a 5 uh, o'clock spot. For, for a stoner comedian radio show, <laughs> you might as well have been five hours early. You might as well have slept here last night. <laughs> we didn't assume you were going to be here until, until 5.20. Yeah, we were going to go on the air at 5.15 to get this last break. <laughs> well, make sure you check out Dave LaGreca on Busted Open and come out to the Busted Open 10-year anniversary party. Hall of Famers Bully Ray, also known as Bubba Ray Dudley. Mark Henry, as well as a ton of special guests this Saturday, April sixth, from two to four Including p.m. Birthday cake pop and Dan. Oh, I'm gonna Thanks, get. I'm guys. gonna come out there in a sachet. Habanero Blues, New York City. Sirius XM Fight Nation Channel one fifty six to listen to Busted Open. Uh, you know, as always, it's the end of. You're gonna be in. I'm. I'm here. I'm in L. Oh, Los Angeles. Oh, I'm coming home though. Oh, I fly home tomorrow. Oh yeah, I fly home tomorrow from L. A. I'm in L. A. Right now. See you Monday. <laughs> see, you mo- see you Monday. Whatever. Whatever's see you, happening. See you Monday. Big this J- is awesome. I've never been in L. A. Let's do the time <laughs> work. <laughs> BigJComedy.com, DanSoder.com, at the Bonfire SXM, Twitter, Instagram. F- uh, go listen to our podcast or download it so we can fucking negotiate with these sons of bitches. Oh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Start making the words. It's got to get out there. And, uh, yeah, let people know you're listening and stuff. Help us out. And we will uh, see you guys next week. Yeah. On the Bye. Bye.